Hey guys, it's Danny. I think you're gonna like today's video because we're gonna talk about some pots especially made for orchids, which what are your orchids for you? Yeah, they actually do really do that. It's not self-watering, not in the traditional way that we all know with the wick or maybe with those cones that dip into a reservoir, no, no. This is, let's call it a sort of a decorative pot which waters the orchid pot inside without you having to remember to do so. And yes, it actually does work. So if this sounds good, well, you're in luck. Today, we're gonna talk all about these pots that you see here. I'm gonna show you how they look like, how they work, my experience with them, and most importantly, where to get yourself something like this. So before we start, don't forget to give this video a like if you end up enjoying it and why not subscribe? I post multiple times a week. Alrighty, so let me give you a few details of how I managed to obtain such pots. I actually have been contacted by the person who makes them. And I'll be honest, I get many, many emails of companies wanting me to try their products. But in the overwhelmingly majority of time, I refuse because I know those products are not really catered to orchids and I will find many flaws with them. So in the end, it will be a waste of product for those companies and a waste of time for us because I don't believe they are all that good, to be fully honest. This, however, really got my attention because on paper, it sounded really, really good. So I accepted the offer to receive four of these pots to try out. And I have to say, I was right. These things actually do work. So let me get you one without an orchid inside so you can better see how it looks like. Alrighty, so I shall demonstrate on this really pretty green one. I didn't tell you the name of this product, right? Well, it is called the 3DP system and behind it, we don't have a very big company at all. Actually, this has been designed and manufactured by a 19 year old student that has a passion for orchids. And some of you might be able to tell this is manufactured through 3D printing. Inside this pot, you can see I already have an orchid. This is my Dendrochillum Wenzeli. For those of you who wondered whatever happened to this orchid, here he is. He's a thirsty boy. So he took part in this experiment and loved it a lot. It's one of those orchids I really cannot keep up with when it comes to watering. So the product, as I was saying, is more of a decorative pot, if you will, on top of a reservoir. So it's not like you pot the orchid inside and then you have issues repotting. No, no. You put the actual orchid pot inside and when you have to repot the orchid, you really don't have to do anything with this self-watering pot, which is great. At first, I misunderstood. I thought you would put the orchid inside and that kind of didn't make much sense to me, but I'm happy to see that this is more of a, let's say, decorative outer container. So here is where the orchid sits. On the bottom, we have a removable panel. Let's call it like that. It is also 3D printed and fits perfectly. And if we look inside, we can see the water in the reservoir. And here is where I'm gonna give you some close-ups. Inside, you will start to see some cables and you might be a little worried. Well, inside there is a water pump which directs the water from the reservoir up to the top container, the actual chamber where the actual orchid pot will sit. If you follow one side of this chamber, you will see two little holes. Do you see them? Well, if I turn around the pot, what we can see are, say, two pipes coming from the reservoir all the way to the top. Now, you might be thinking that you kind of get the system. Water is being pumped from below, from the reservoir, all the way up through the pipes. And this is how the orchids get watered, with water from above, right? Wrong. And actually, that's a good thing. Water doesn't come from above, it actually comes from below. There is another hole below through which water is being pumped. So practically what's happening is that the orchid is being soaked from below, not watered from the top. And as I was saying, that's a good thing because it eliminates the risk of having water in between the leaves and the stem, maybe in the crown, why not if you have a tiny orchid. And these two pipes are just there for drainage. So in case there is a malfunction, water can drain back into the reservoir 
thus avoiding a spill. Also in the back, you might have noticed a little chamber here. Well, this is a place where we will add a battery. Yes, this is a battery operated system. It is electric, but you don't need to plug it in, which is great. Now, being that I'm not an electrical engineer, I'm not gonna give you too many details of what's in here because I don't even know how to call them. There is a board that connects the battery to a water sensor, which you can see here. Now, when the water is being pumped and it reaches the sensor, the pump is immediately shut down. There is a cycle, which I will show you in just a second, but pretty much this is the onboard computer. This controls how often the orchid is watered and the process of watering. So in order to fully demonstrate this, I will have to throw away this water that you see here because yes, I have been using this for about two months or so. So it's a good idea to start from zero and show you exactly how you assemble this. Give me a second. Alrighty, so the first thing we need to do is add water. One thing the reservoir doesn't have is an indicator of where the water level should be. You don't necessarily need one, but maybe in future models that can be a nice addition. Well, what you definitely need to do is make sure that the pump inside is completely submersed in water. Water pumps will burn if they don't have enough water, if they run dry. If you've ever had a water pump from your aquarium, that's pretty much it. I'm not going to pre-fertilize it because I have self or not self, slow release fertilizer in the pot. So there is no need to overly fertilize my orchid. So I'm just gonna use plain water. So I hope you can see that the pump is completely submersed. What I actually like to do is place enough water to not touch the bottom, so this panel, but get close enough. I discovered that if I don't put too much water, I have to re top let's say in about three weeks or so and if i place this level of water it keeps going for more than a month how great is that right so now that we have water in the reservoir it's time to put the panel back if you look at the panel you will notice that on one side it has a bit of a raised edge a little further in and one side that doesn't have an edge i'm not sure if this is purposeful or this is how 3D printing works. I'm gonna be honest, I never 3D printed anything, so I don't really know how it works. But Liv, which is the designer of this pot, says that you can put the panel like this if you want a little bit of water retention here, or you can place it like this if you want all of the water to drain back. And you know your girl needs water, so what I like to do is put it like this. Not only do I have a bit of an edge, to grab it like this, but also I have a little bit more water left here at the bottom, which makes sure my orchid stays hydrated even longer. It's really cool for warm environments. Liv, was that intentional? Let me know, because if it was just a byproduct of 3D printing, that is great use of the little feature. So I placed the panel inside. It doesn't click into place or anything. It sits on the, let's say, edge of this upper container. And now it is time to attach the battery. First, let me just show you what's on the back. So we have this little chamber here where this panel sits. Here's where we're gonna need this type of battery. It is a nine volt battery. What I like to do is first connect it. You're gonna hear a beep. That is okay, don't worry. And then squeeze it in this low chamber, like so. And then I like to put back the little wires neatly inside, hopefully not breaking them. I am afraid I'm gonna break something. I break stuff. It can be very clumsy sometimes. <laughs> to turn it on for the first time, we need to press a little button here on the chamber. Do we see it? Yes, this little button. We need to keep it pressed for five seconds. So one, two, three, four, five. And here we go, water is being pumped inside the pot. Now, when it reaches the sensor, look what happens. The pump stops, then the water slowly drains back in. But oh wait, the pump brings the water level up again. Well, it will continuously do so for about a minute. What this does is completely soak the orchid pot. 
So this is how it works without the orchid inside and I'm gonna show you how it works with the orchid inside. Pretty much the same thing. Yes, Maya, I know I'm stating the obvious. I have been known to be Captain Obvious sometimes. But yeah, I just wanted to show you the process without the orchid. And I think you can imagine <laughs> what's the idea behind it, right? Alrighty, so about a minute has passed and as you can see, all of the water is being drained back. It goes back through the same hole that it's coming up. <laughs> stating the obvious again but yeah and also as you can see on the bottom panel in that little middle circle there is a little bit of water trapped in there which is how I like it if you don't like that water you can just flip the panel and you won't have that water there at this point by default the system will rewater your orchid in seven days you don't have to set anything at this point if you want to change the number of days I'm gonna show you how a little bit later, but just so you know, rewatering will happen again in seven days. Now, let's put Mr. Gundrokilum here, who is a very thirsty boy, and this pot kind of saved him, and give him a good water. If you want to water the orchid yet again, all you need to do is press this button five seconds again. One, two, three, four, five. And the orchid is being watered. So let me tell you a few details as my orchid is being watered. You will hear it working. I hope you can hear it's not very very loud. You can definitely hear the water dripping. There is a bit of a buzz or a hum because of the water pump but it's it's really silent. It's not gonna wake you up I believe. I would not hear it if I would sleep. And you cannot see it maybe but I can see the orchid is being watered. After it finishes I'm gonna show you. So there is a way to set this device to water your orchid every three, four, five, six, seven days up until 12 days. Am I lying to you guys? Let me just check the email. <laughs> Alrighty, there we go. So currently this device can be set to water your orchid anywhere in between three to 12 days. However, I did mention that it would be great to have an option to water orchids every day as well. I'm thinking maybe even bare rooted vandas or even basket vandas. They are bare rooted, but they will get a soak every day. You don't have to go to the bucket, right? So in the future, Lev said that he will work to upgrade the software to accommodate every one to 14 days watering, which is great. For now, we only have three to 12 days. Now, in order to set the interval this is a little bit tricky but again keep in mind this is homemade <laughs> pretty much so yeah we don't have fancy digital screens or anything but it's not hard to set the number of days we're gonna have to keep the button pressed for a number of seconds for three days we will have to keep it pressed for 35 seconds for four days 45 seconds for five days 55 seconds for six days 65 seconds and so on so you can get a timer or your phone and just keep it pressed and time how many seconds you would like. I personally have kept the system every week. I did try to set it to three days and it absolutely worked. I tried to set it to two days and it didn't work. So for me, one week was okay, but this definitely will depend on environment and of course, the potting mix your orchid is potted in. Now that it's summer, I might have to water these orchids every five days or so because it's getting pretty hot, but we'll see. So yeah, for now, there isn't like a digital screen that you can press some buttons and there you go and it will tell you the number of days. This is a lot more simpler than that, but it absolutely works. So let's see if my little orchid is wet. Yes, it is wet. It looks like it has been soaked. <laughs> water is still dripping from it because I have the panel turned. So I have a little bit of water there, which is good for me. But oh my goodness, the quantity of roots. Finally, he's happy, right? So the system did a pretty great job. This is a mixture of moss and bark. If you only have bark in here, again, it will work because pretty much it soaks the entire pot. If you have a mixture only of moss here, that will pretty much soak the entire moss. So you have to be a little bit careful with that. Anyway, full sphagnum moss setups are not necessarily beginner friendly. So I don't know how many of you have full sphagnum moss, but that's where I see this being a little bit too much. But for bark mixtures or coconut husk, or leka or anything that is not super water retentive like moss anything you can soak pretty much this will do it for you one thing you will not have is water at the top 
Now, is this a good thing or a bad thing? Depends how you look at it. I would definitely say it's a good thing because you will not have residue at the top. You will not have salt build up. And also because maybe you don't want to risk stem rot and other things that can happen if you go with the soak a little bit too high. In the end, the roots will be soaked. They are wicking, so they will hydrate the orchid. They will kind of wick all the way to the top, but you will not have those tiny little brand new root tips maybe being watered. Is it a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's neutral. Depends on your setup. I don't care about it. I don't mind. I never actually pour water on the roots because usually I use fertilized water and I don't want soil deposits on the tiny roots. And in a nutshell, that is it. It is so simple, you guys, but oh my goodness, it works. I don't like super complicated things. You know me, I don't keep a catalog of my orchids. I don't write entries. I don't do all of that stuff because I don't have time. So I appreciate very simple stuff that I set once, I put it here, and then I don't care anymore. And that's exactly what this does, which is the best thing about it and why I'm so happy about it. It is so simple. All I wanted to do is soak my orchid every seven days. That is all. I do not need anything else. And that's exactly what it does. Obviously, if you wanted to soak your orchid every three days, you can definitely do that. And other than that, I really did not have any unexpected issues. The only thing that I did experience, and again, I did send my feedback, more complete feedback to Lev, and this will be addressed in a manual. One thing that happened at some point was that the level of water in the reservoir obviously decreased through a little bit of evaporation, which is minimal. By the way, you're not gonna lose a lot of water, but obviously that water gets trapped in the pot, sucked by the moss. So there is a degree of water just disappearing every week, right? So at some point, the level was not high enough to reach the sensor here. And what happened was the pot started to beep. Every one minute or so, it would do a beep or two beeps or something like that. And initially I didn't know what this meant because yes, there is a sort of video tutorial about these pots, but there isn't a manual that will give you all of the things that you need to know, all of the warning signs, all of the features. I didn't know if the pump would stop by itself, if the water wasn't high enough, but thankfully it absolutely does. And I actually did catch it once. So what happens is when you don't have enough water in the reservoir, the pump starts again, it's cycle, but it actually never reaches the sensor. So after a minute or so, it completely stops. It doesn't run on dry, which is good because it's not gonna burn, but the pot will continuously beep every minute or so, and you disconnect the battery, pretty much resetting the system, connecting it back, and starting the cycle once again by pressing the button for five seconds. Other than that, it doesn't stop. It will tell you if there isn't enough water. Even so, the orchid will still be watered because the water will still reach half the pot, right? So <laughs> the orchid is not gonna get dehydrated, but the pot will beep. So I think that all of these things are, or will be very soon addressed in a manual on the website, because that indeed is a concern. If the pump runs dry, it's a problem, but it definitely doesn't, it stops by itself. Another thing that I asked Liv was, how long does this battery last? And it lasts a long time. Theoretically, it should last for around three years. This is what he calculates. If it lasts two years or three years or a year and a half, I'm not sure, but it's still a heck of a long time, isn't it? And in my experience, the system absolutely worked every single week. What I did notice is that it didn't work at the same hour necessarily, but it did work on the same day for me. So every week the plants were watered and I've tried Phalaenopsis, Mycelogeny, this guy, Dendrochillum, these Phalaenopsis that were in bloom, my goodness, they were losing buds, they were losing flowers because I just did not have time to keep up with their watering demands. Put them in the system, boom, no more bloom fall because the orchids were hydrated on time. The one that I showed you can accommodate really easy a 10 centimeter or about a four inch pot. And there is a bigger size in which I can comfortably place the typical orchid pot. That noise, 
<laughs> There's a little bit of a linear pattern here. And that would be around six inches or so. I think you can definitely fit in here. I wouldn't necessarily go any higher because you do want a little bit of air here for the roots to breathe. And it would also soak the orchid a lot better. And who knows, maybe in the future we're gonna have even bigger sizes. I will be honest, I'm not 100% sure of how many colors are available, but obviously you can check the website down below because yes, obviously I will link you to the website down below where you can find these products and you can also purchase them. The colors that I got were a really, really beautiful red one. I really like this. The typical white, which is very beautiful and the green one that you just saw. And one thing that I'm noticing, which is a little bit different on the bigger models is that the sensor is movable. So if you want the water to reach a little bit higher, you can actually move the sensor higher. Or if you want the water level to be lower and not go any higher than that, you can put it all the way down and the sensor is right here. So again, a little bit of customization there, which is great. Again, we have the same principle, this little chamber with the battery here, which attaches to the magnet. And this is my Selogeny, which again, the root production. This orchid really, really loves water. And it's so easy for me to just skip watering day and she does not appreciate it. All of the orchids that I put in these pots are very thirsty or they're in flower and in spike and they require a lot of water. This is the orchid that I showed you on my shorts channel that it was just limpy and dehydrated. Yeah, it, it lost some buds. <laughs> it lost some buds when it did that, not fun. Well, I put it here and it didn't lose any more buds, which is great. And in the end, I actually did ask Lev to tell us a little bit more about himself because I do believe just as important as the product is the person behind the product. So as I was saying, Lev is a 19 year old student. He's in London, he studies finance, so he's not in the business of necessarily making work in pots, but who knows? Maybe he will in the future. And he actually produces other things, not only orchid pots, even Star Wars figurines and stuff. Did I read it correctly? That's cool. Oh, Star Wars cosplay. Currently, these pots are made out of recyclable PET. It's the type of plastic that bottles are made of, you know, the water bottles or the Coke bottles and stuff. In the future, Lev is looking to use already recycled products. That is a little bit of a harder thing to do. I can imagine it's hard to source a lot of materials, but he did mention that he has sustainability in mind. Obviously, since this absolutely save up a ton of water, a ton of time, and just make sure you don't just waste a whole lot of water. And this is something I can totally relate. Some of you might know I am using reverse osmosis water, which is not the most efficient type of water to use, obviously. But right now we cannot really do much modification to where we live, a whole different story. But all of my orchid setups have always been aimed at reducing water consumption. And throughout the years, ever since we moved here, you guys saw, I always use a little bit of water in the dish, in the reservoir, here and there. I don't go to the sink. I just put a little bit of water and I invent setups that only use a tiny little bit of water. So totally relate to that. And I really appreciate that the system also saves up on water, especially if it's reverse osmosis water. And basically, honestly, it's a passion project. This is how I see it. What do you think, Liv? I don't think I would invest so much time into developing this if I wasn't passionate about orchids. And this is what I appreciate most because when you are passionate about something and you do this with the well-being of the orchid and of the user in mind, you get a good product. I have not been paid to do this video. I did receive these for free because I accepted to receive them and I'm really happy. And honestly, I'm so happy to see that young people do invest this much time and thought into creating these products because this will be the future. I really, really hope this will take off for you and you will develop it maybe into even more exciting stuff for orchids or maybe tweak on these things. As I was saying, I will link you to Lev's website down below in the description where you can learn more and order these if you want to have one. They are not cheap. I will say this, they are not cheap, but at the same time, we're not talking about a company with automated systems and so on. So if you really like it, I can tell you for myself, I have had a very good experience with it and I do want to support Lev further because I do feel like he has great ideas. And yeah, that is about it, you guys. 
let me know in a comment below do you already have these because i know somebody actually left a comment about them you kept seeing them on the shelf there as i was trying them out so maybe some of you already have these let me know what do you think of them what has been your experience with them and if you guys decide to purchase them come back to this video and let me know how is it working out for you i would love to know and very thankful for them so Thank you for writing to me. I hope I did these products justice. If there's anything I missed, please leave us a comment and I'll make sure to pin it. I'll put it at the top. If I miss details or if you have some updates for us, let us know in a comment, I'll pin it. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you wanna follow me on social media, search for me. I'm at Miss Market Girl pretty much everywhere. You can also check out my shorts channel for short form content. But most importantly, do subscribe to this channel because this is where I post all of the interesting things. So with that said, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.